Okay, how to avoid plug-in conflict. Is there any program for that? I'm going to put you back on the microphone there, Sandy. Okay, there you go. There you go. Uh, Rick, I seem to get into problems where my plugins um, load the server too much. So I don't know how many is too many. And I was wondering whether there was a program out there on the web somewhere that would analyze my plugins for conflicts between them. Well, there isn't a plugin that will check for conflicts. Most conflicts between plugins are either because they are, oh, you know, poorly written. Well, one of them is poorly written. So it could be that, you know, uh, so you don't end up with that problem with one that has tons and tons and tons of downloads because it had, it had tons of downloads and also, you know, decent ratings. Then it wouldn't get that if it had problems being poorly written. And the other one is JavaScript conflicts. And, you know, JavaScript conflicts are still real because some people still don't load the specific libraries in no conflict mode. But, you know, I think in terms of so there isn't a plugin that checks to make sure all the other plugins all work together properly. That's the first answer to your question. The second answer is if you're concerned about a um, plugin having a high load on your server, the way to check that is by using, let's see if Firefox is working properly now, by using this Y slow feature. And why slow is an add-on to Firefox. So, you know, if you want to search for why slow add-on, you know, here's your add-on for Firefox. And you can add this why slow to your Firefox installation. And then we'll go over to my site and you can see how it works. You know, YSlow shows up in the same place as Firebug does. And if we run the YSlow test, I don't think I'm going to do very well here right now because I'm still in the process of fooling around with the page. It gives me an overall performance of a C, and it says make fewer HTTP requests. Well, that in particular is one of those things that is influenced by your plugins. So it says this page has 22 external JavaScripts. Try combining them into one. And this page has 10 external, external style sheets. Try combining them into one. Those two things are plugin driven. So if we take a look at edit CSS for a moment, you know, so I have standard style CSS, layout CSS by you know, by thesis. Then I have my custom CSS, which is the one I'm doing. And then we, there's this GDR star rating CSS. I added, you know, star ratings to the site. And unfortunately, even though there are no star ratings on this page, it loads, because of the way the plugin is written, it loads the CSS file on all pages, which is not really good. I mean, you see that, and you see it here. You know, these two things actually are based on, these two things are off of that GDR star rating. And, um, you know, it gives you that one plugin loads two CSS files. Then contact form 7, even though I don't have any contact forms added here, contact form 7 has added a style sheet to the page. And actually, this is something that I can fix. I have a video series on how to use Contact Form 7. And if you look at that, you'll see that there is one more missing video, which is how to optimize Contact Form 7 for Thesis. And when you optimize Contact Form 7 for Thesis, it gets rid of this extra style sheet, except on only on the pages that it's going to be used. And it also gets rid of some of the JavaScript. But then WPFP, I don't know what that is. 
unfortunately, WPE Store is loading its styles on this page, even though there isn't anything related to the store on the page. And so is, this is another star rating. So again, we're still, for whatever reason, this thing has three different CSS files. And there's a blank custom CSS file that I don't know why it exists. And then wishlist member, which is the membership plugin we use, creates its own on-the-fly style sheet. And again, even though there's no membership component to this front page, oh, no, there is. It's got the login, so it's going to have that every time. Okay, so you can see we have, if I were to deactivate that star rating, I would automatically lose three style sheets. And were I to optimize contact form 7, I would lose this style sheet. So I would have gotten rid of, from I would have taken it from 10 down to 6. And then the 22 external JavaScripts, if we, uh, let's see, 22 external JavaScripts. Okay, so there are 12 JavaScripts in the head of the document. One of them is through for my video player that I don't actually have set up on this page yet, but will pretty soon. The second one is standard jQuery in the head. The next one is star rating. Again, so that's the JavaScript. Then I have one, two, three, four, five. Wish list member one, just another continuation of my disappointment in that plugin because it's one plugin it could easily just reload one JavaScript but it chooses not to instead it adds one two three four five JavaScript plugins or five JavaScript files and then simple forum creates a JavaScript file and which is again related to a plugin WP favorite post is related to a plugin and it loads that. Flow player, I'm getting ready to stop using. And so, by in a transition between plugins right now. And so, this one gets loaded too. And then another JavaScript file, the shopping cart for WPE Store. And you can see all of those are related really to different plugins that I have installed on the site. One of the ways that this can get solved is if and I'm sort of loath to just come right out and say this because it's a little, it's dangerous. That is, I have not been able to make it work properly on my site, and that's W3 Total Cache. One of the nice things W3 Total Cache does do, though, is it will minimize and combine all of these files into a single JavaScript file before it outputs it, which is actually quite nice. But because my site is complicated, and because wishlist member is complicated, it interferes too much with wishlist member for me to be able to use. But there may be other plugins out there that will combine and minimize JavaScript files for you. So that was the first point. Let's see. Use a content delivery network. Um, that's kind of advanced. What else? Put the JavaScript out at the bottom. Again, that's still a... Uh, problem with plugins themselves. Reduce DNS lookups. Now, you could very well have a lot of DNS lookups on your site because of the way that a lot of plugins have their own DNS lookups. So right now, for example, you can see I look up gravatar.com in order to put the gravatars inside of the testimonials. And I'm not sure why it looks up Obviously, I've got a canonical URL issue here between this URL and that URL. They're really the same thing, but for whatever reason, it's looking at both places. This is a tracking that I'm using, and I don't have any idea what this is or why I'm looking for it. And in my Google Analytics, these things actually might be combined for some reason or another. And then I'm calling the jQuery from Google rather than from my site. So some of these 
Well, I guess none of these are, none of them on my, oh, no, this one on my site is related to plugins. But if you've got a Twitter, you know, plugin or Facebook plugin or you have a bunch of other plugins like that, that go out to other sites and grab information and bring it back to your site, those all have DNS lookups. And let's see, I'm going to put you back online here, Sandy, and why don't you talk about the plugins that you have working? I think the problem I have is with a plugin that maximizes the RAM is a plugin that constantly pulls photos from Flickr. Um, if a person pulls up this particular web page, it'll pull up a certain Flickr photo, but if somebody else pulls up that page, they, it might pull up a different photo. So my images folder gets large, and unfortunately the, the server load is more than I like to have, so I was trying to easily find out which plugins weren't um, battling each other, and, and that's not an easy thing other than turning one off and, and that kind of thing, and trying to come up with a simple way for the photos. Well, the plugins conflicting with each other doesn't probably doesn't have anything to do with server load. What is the URL of the site you're talking about? I don't really want to go there. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, okay. Uh, well, you're right that a uh, a plugin that draws random images from Flickr or draws random content from any place is going to increase the server load because every time the page is fed, it's got to run out and grab that information and then bring it back. And if it doesn't increase server load, it will increase page load. So, and, you know, Flickr is not the only example of that. I mean, there are YouTube video plugins that allow you to, you know, serve up popular YouTube videos or, and so you don't actually control what video is being served up. You know, the plugin is going to go out and find the three most popular or what's cool now or, you know, videos on this topic or something like that. It's going to go out there and make that query and get that information and bring that back. Any kind of a plugin like that is going to slow down your page load just because the page is not going to be able to load until after it's brought that information back. Does that make sense? That makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, actually, so that's fine. 